Hi everyone, and welcome back to episode 5 of Slay the Spire. Today we are going to take on the Spire with the Defect. Last time we tried the Silent and ended up dying very quickly in the first level. Uh, because we just took more damage than we had life, and that's usually why you die. Uh, the Defect is sort of a... I guess you'd say it's a magic user character. Uh, most of its uh, abilities are spell-like, and I'm going to use the initial choice to obtain a random common relic. And I think that relic just auto-upgrades a couple cards for us. It does. So we, we have two upgraded skills to start. And if we look at our skills... You can see when you upgrade them, they just have a better benefit, a better bonus. So the defect starts with uh, 10 cards. We have four blocks, four strikes, uh, a channel of a lightning, and a dual cast. And these two cards are dealing with orbs, which are the sort of defect's special ability. And I'll show you that in just a minute as we get started. So, we only have 99 gold, so it's not really worth going to a... Well, you know what? I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go here. We'll go ahead and visit a merchant. Because sometimes you can get a good cheap card early on that can really help your play. So key to the defect play is his orbs. And there are a bunch of different orbs and each of them has a passive ability and a, an ability when you evoke it. And if you fill up your orb slots, you can see we have three orb slots. Um, if you fill up your orb slot and you channel another orb, the first orb in the series gets evoked automatically. And orbs are nice because they're indirect damage, and their passive abilities are also nice because it's a good way to do damage without having to attack. And it's sort of free damage, if you will. So, I am going to go ahead and start playing this. And we are getting attacked twice, so I really am going to play this guy a little more conservatively because, you know, with only 75 life and... No, not a very strong direct damage character. Staying alive is important, as we learned last time. And these guys are just... They just want to kill us, and it's not fair. So I'm going to go ahead and kill that one off. <clears throat> And you can see the orbs come into play right there. We did damage to this guy, but he didn't use his curl up ability because it was indirect damage, not attack damage. So if we channel another orb, we can just kill this guy off. Uh, I was going to try and demonstrate what happens when you channel extra orbs, but we were just going to run out of time. So I am going to take Leap because that's a nice solid... Uh, defensive skill. We don't have a lot of gold, so let's see if there's any good cards on sale. That is not particularly useful. Streamline is pretty useful. I think I will take... I think I'll go ahead and take Streamline, and I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, ability that applies Vulnerable too. So that exhausts our cash, so let's proceed. Uh, and let's take the question mark room. Uh, yeah, I don't like that curse. Let's uh, go ahead and increase our max hit points. Max hit points are always good, and I like donuts. 
So, on with the fight. And we've seen these guys before. We know what they're going to do. So let's go ahead and hit him with vulnerable. And dual cast will auto use the active ability of this orb twice, which is to deal eight damage. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that just to go ahead and tear this guy down as quickly as possible. Doing that means we do lose the passive benefit of that, but we uh, played the wrong played the wrong defend. I have to remember that uh, better copy is in in our deck. Uh, without the the orb above our head, we're not doing that end of round attack that we get for free. So let's get our orb back and go ahead and kill this guy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Ball Lightning, which is an attack that also channels a Lightning Orb. So, which way do we want to go? I think we're going to go this way because it gives us access to a boss battle. Oh, just a free card upgrade. I think we'll upgrade... Streamline. We need a big damage card. And we're only down one hit point, so we're definitely going to smith here. And I'm going to upgrade this card to do 10 damage. And this is one of those situations where the text blocks the uh, card effect. Um, some of these upgrades will actually affect the cost of the card, which you can't see. So... All right. Uh, yeah, we'll continue on our way. I probably should have done ball lightning. That was done. Oh, well. Let's go ahead and do that, and we'll do... Are you going to kill it? You are going to kill it. Thank you. See what other cards we get. Um, block equal to the number of cards in your discard pile. That's situationally useful. Healing at the end of combat is always useful, and that's a power, so we play it and potentially play it multiple times per turn. Channeling dark is also also useful, but I'm going to take the heal. And we are going to take the boss. Ooh, that's two boss fights. Um, you know, I'm going to go this way because that's one boss fight followed by the option for a rest area. So we will defend. That negates the attack. We will attack with the uh, ball lightning, which auto channels another orb for us. And we'll go ahead and apply our heal as well. So the disadvantage of the orbs is the fact that they don't, uh, they're not targeted attacks. You can't control which monster they hit. So um, you're kind of stuck with the luck of the draw. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just defend again so we don't take more damage. And you can see that either of those orbs would have killed the other guy. Um, but we don't have that as a choice. But we do have the choice now of killing him. We're going to go ahead and channel that and just 
kill him. And I'm going to go ahead and evoke this orb twice, which is going to be enough to kill off the remaining guy. We'll take our poison potion. Uh, I think I'm going to take genetic algorithm. Uh, because this card has, it's early in the game, and this card, the block value just goes up and up and up as you use it. So we are going to use that regularly. Uh, doesn't really matter, but I'm going to take this relic chest. And every, every three times we shuffle our draw pile, we gain two extra energy. We will take that, certainly. And it's on to the boss fight. Yee, this is not a good boss. I can tell you that right now. Uh, this boss has an enrage that he's going to cast this round, which basically boosts his strength every time we play a non-attack card. So if we look at this, uh, whenever we play a skill. So, you know, these are attacks. This is a skill. And this is a skill. Um, so what we really want to do is use that card as much as possible. And I am going to strike him again, but I am also going to use this because I just want some block. And 21, that's going to do 16. No. So we're going to take some damage here. Uh, we're going to gain, so this is a skill, so we're going to gain block, but we lose because he's going to get enraged even further. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to go attack. Eee, I hate this guy. Um, I think that's a fair balance. We're going to take six damage. We need to kill him this round, though. Ugh, which we can't... Oh, we're going to kill him no matter what, so... Let's make sure we kill him by channeling lightning. We'll get our free heal out of the deal. And he only has three hit points left, and we're going to do nine with our orb, so he's dead. Alright, we get... Uh, whenever you rest, we can add a card. Okay, that's maybe useful. Uh, strength potion, which actually isn't, well, it might be useful. And some offensive cards. I am going to take, I think I'm going to take Barrage, which leverages our uh, attack cards. So we're in pretty good shape. We have 150 gold, which means we could actually benefit from a merchant visit. Uh, let's go ahead and rest. And I'm going to go ahead and smith. And I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this because it's going to... Uh, upgrade the amount of block we gain every time we use this card. Now, do I want to go to the merchant or do I want to do the mystery and go up to that boss fight? I think I'm going to go this way. Be a little risky, but... All right, he is going to attack, so let's go ahead and... Block and block. That gives us 12. We'll channel another lightning. Just to build our passive offense. Um, sure, that's going to deal 8 damage. I don't really want to dual cast. In fact, I may get rid... Dual cast is, you know... It's nice if you have a dark deck because dark orbs sort of build up offense 
for their evoke use passively. But lightning, I'd rather just keep lightning in my uh, in my control because it's passive damage. And maybe this is why I suck so much at playing this character. Uh, maybe it would be better to do something different. I am going to go all offense on this guy and just kill him. Uh, gain 7 block and gain energy next turn. Sounds like a good combo to me. So, we're still in good health, so I'm not going to rest. I'm going to upgrade a card. And I'm going to upgrade self-heal, which heals us more if we use it. And we're going to take on another boss fight. And we're going to channel. And unfortunately, this guy does a lot of offensive attacks. Uh, 16 block versus 18 damage. I can live with that. We do have a rest area coming up before the final boss fight, so that's okay. We get some extra uh, energy this round, so I am going to use Genetic Algorithm. Use our block card. Give us the most possible block. We'll go ahead and deal 10 damage, and then we're going to use Barrage, which is going to do another 12. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to kill him. So I'm going to keep the passive damage going. And we do have our poison potion up there, but I'm not going to use that just yet. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to self-repair. And I'm going to do that. Should have done the... Uh, vulnerability before I did the uh, stream streamline. That would have been smart. Okay, so here we're going to channel a lightning which is going to evoke an orb automatically. So this is going to do actually a fair amount of damage. Uh, so we can kill him. Yay! And we regained our 10 points so we get some gold. We get a uh, free block at the start of combat. Uh, dexterity potion, which will up our block, and channeling a frost. I think we're going to channel frost. Frost is a defensive orb. So let's go ahead and take our take our break, and I think I'm actually going to risk going in with slightly reduced hit points and upgrade a card. Um, I think the card I want to upgrade is Zap, because Zap goes to zero energy cost. So, off to the first boss. And we know what this guy does. He, uh, when he wakes up, he's going to hit us with a huge attack in the first round. So I want to gain energy for next turn so we can maximize our cards. Okay, so what I want to do is actually throw our poison and go ahead and take advantage of that. And let's go ahead and... Gain 9 block, and that goes to 12. We'll gain block there. And uh, we automatically heal at the end of the level, so this card it has no value in this fight. So we're going to go ahead and use Streamline. And then we're going to suck down a bunch of damage. Luckily, that's the worst of it right there. So we'll go ahead and channel some lightning, and I'm going to evoke that orb, and you can see that that did 16 points of damage. Uh, 
We have plenty of block. There's no reason to play either of those cards. Let's channel a frost. We'll definitely do use that card because that card will now have a zero cost and I should have done this first. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the block, play the lightning, and now we have three orbs so we can deal six damage per orb. And you can see we gained a little bit of passive defense from or passive block from our frost orb. So it's only doing six damage so let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and evoke that orb and I'll strike twice. And he is putting a whole lot of burn in our uh, in our deck, which is going to come back and bite us. And I honestly don't remember if... I'm going to try this. I don't remember if burn cards actually bypass block or not. But we don't have anything else to do, so we may as well do that. Let's see what happens. Oh no, it, they can be blocked. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, 14 damage. We will definitely play our block. I'm going to play this to channel our Frost Orb, which gives us more block than the passive ability. And we don't have anything else really to do, so we will just whack him. Take some more damage. And remember, we do heal to full at the end of this combat, so all we really have to do is survive. Uh, we will maximize that. Go ahead and invoke our orbs. Getting pretty close to the end. We're not really... I think we're good to go. As long as he doesn't do some massive attack like this. Um, this channel of frost. Go ahead and deal damage. And then channel one lightning should do it for us. And we are victorious. Uh, doo -doo. This is not a bad card. I think what I'm going to do is take buffer because having a uh, complete defensive stop in your arsenal is always a good idea. Uh... I don't really want to transform all our Strike and Defend cards. For every five cards in your deck, heal three points whenever you enter a rest site. That is actually pretty nice. Uh, possibly useful, but not so much. I'm going to take the Eternal Feather. And we have survived into Act 2 with the Defect, which usually I can get this far, but Act 2 is usually where I face my demise with this character. Uh, and with that, we've been playing for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, so I am going to call the episode here. I hope you're enjoying these uh, little fun romps through the Spire and watching me try and maximize card performance and survive. Um, hopefully we will be more successful with the defect than we were with the unfortunate silent. Uh, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell to find out when new videos go out. And uh, drop me a comment about the series if you have any thoughts. I will see you next time. Have a great day.